Now, up next, we're going to have a joint presentation by Justin Moran and Mark Buchenhout. Justin is a seasoned advisor and former C-level executive with over 20 years experience in strategy consulting, business transformation, operations management, and corporate finance. His diverse professional background includes a successful career in telecommunications, media, and technology, TNT, consulting at Delta Partners Group, as a tier one advisory firm in the Middle East. Serving as a senior principal, Justin was an expert advisor to C-level executives for several global companies, including Vion, Saudi Telecoms, Virgin Mobile, and MTN. He's the holder of six Sigma black belts, so not somebody to be messed with. Now, Mark leads EY Consulting Data and Analytics practice with a fast-growing team. He has more than 16 years of global experience in the BI and data analytics and digital field in multi-billion dollar companies with more than 10 years at director level in telecom and consulting industry. In his earlier career, he worked for Hertz, Yahoo, and O2 Telefonica, amongst others. He's a senior expert in data engineering and data sciences with a key interest in customer and finance analytics. Mark has an MBA as well as degrees in economics management, communication, and also a diploma in internet marketing. He's also completed executive programs at UPenn, Wharton, UCLA, and MIT, as well as several certifications. Now, I don't know about you, but this collaboration sounds like the perfect duo to inform us about one of the most highly anticipated presentations of the day, big harvesting big data analytics for business competitiveness. Let's welcome them to the stage. Hey, hello everyone. Um, I'm not sure if we can get a thumbs up that all is good and everyone can hear us, but welcome to our session today on data and analytics at TechCon 2022. We're glad to be back here with TechCon this year. Today, we will be addressing the big data challenge. How can companies harvest big data analytics to enhance their competitiveness? To guide us through this discussion, we have prepared a short presentation to give you a flavor of why every company, whether you're big or small, traditional or digital, why everyone should be thinking about a data strategy. We're going to talk through the benefits of big data. We'll give you examples of how companies are using data to gain a competitive advantage and leveraging your own experiences and leading practices. You know, we'll show you how you can start that journey and what are some of the key success factors. Now, we definitely won't make data and analytics experts out of everyone here, but whether you are C-levels thinking about how to start a data and analytics program, or you're just curious about the topic, or you're an absolute expert in the area, and maybe just a techie overall, you know, there's something in here for each of you. Uh, most of all, we want you to come away from today's presentation, having at least a full picture of the world of big data covering both what's in front of the curtain. So, you know, that means the practical use cases that you would feel and touch every day to what's what we would say is behind the curtain. So all the components that make use of big data effectively. We expect this to last maybe for about 25 minutes and then we'll leave some time at the end for questions. So feel free to pop those in the chat um, so we can answer those questions that you may have. So. To start, your presentation today is brought to you by EY Caribbean, and we have been serving industry leaders across the Caribbean for the last 100 years. We have eight offices and a team of 750 professionals. My name is Justin Marin, senior leader in the tech consulting practice of EY, and here to present with me today is Mark Buchenhout, who is also a senior leader in tech consulting in the Belgium office, and he's our data and analytics expert with us today. Mark, introduce yourself for everyone. Hello, good morning, everybody. So thank you. I already got a, quite a good introduction. So I spent actually the last uh, last nine years in the Caribbean. I was also working for, for Digital for the last nine years. So I'm very familiar with the with the with the market here, and I'm delighted to to be part of that uh, discussion. All right, great. So 
just to establish a bit some of our credentials, EY, both of us come from the EY technology consulting practice, and we provide a wide range of capabilities from tech transformations to data and analytics, cybersecurity, and data privacy. So contrary to what's out there in the public, we are not just an accounting firm. Ernst & Young is very much also big in the technology consulting space. And if you are interested in knowing more about our services in the tech space, we're happy to speak to you after the presentation. As, and just as a reminder, you know, if you have any questions, um, please do pop them in the, the comment box. So we start off with some interesting facts and data points about how the digital revolution is setting off a chain reaction that has put digital transformation squarely at the center of every business leader's growth strategy. You see some numbers there, 350 billion market is the customer transformation market. Digital transformation, as you know, is nothing new. Probably most of you here today are involved in some way, in some type of digital transformation effort. It's a hot topic. Most of the transformation efforts today are focused on enhancing the customer experience, which is a key driver of market performance and competitive advantage. But if you think of how differently you go about your day today versus just two years ago, pre-pandemic, your digital interactions have probably increased a hundredfold from the way you collaborate online to shopping at Price Mart, to buying your lunch through Crave or Hugo, or buying goods via Amazon and shipping it to Jamaica. You have become part of that digital transformation, probably as a consumer. So think of the investments made to convert your everyday interactions into digital interactions and making that seamless and frictionless. But how can companies generate a return on their digital transformation investments? This is the big data imperative. As customer experiences are trans transformed to digital experiences, the amount of data generated is exploding exponentially and has tremendous value to companies today. So unless companies put in a solid program in place to govern, manage, and put that data to use, then you really risk missing out on opportunities to maximize value from your digital transformation efforts. So Mark will lead us off on that thought on the next slide. Yeah, thank you, Justin. So with billions of dollars invested in, in digital transformation initiative over the last decades, and the vast majority are, are still underperforming, unfortunately, due to fundamental data challenges. For instance, we see here on that slide amongst the top three related data issue, the, the first one being poor data quality, uh, incomplete data, thus the importance of data governance. The second one here is also lack of strong data analytics. Uh, I will add to this that the ability to build strong analytics function, strong analytics team, and the right competency. Um, the third one is lack of data monetization uh, strategy and capability. And that's really a challenge that needs to get approached with the, with the right methods uh, by defining clear value uh, generator use cases, underpinning by the right data strategy. Combining all of your data from disparate sources is also the first step toward turning it into business value. Whether your new data integration or refreshing your understanding, I think in this webinar we clarify what is it, why it's critical in terms of analytics and business initiative. We see here that big data brings also a lot of opportunities. Just to cut a few, AI enablement, looking at key processes, decision and automation, of course, a new digital integration of huge variety of data coming for all those apps or that ecosystem. For example, we are very often talking about digital integration hub. That is a kind of application architecture that specifically address the challenge in delivering highly available, high throughput and responsive application programming interface while also reducing the workload on system of reports. So, for instance, a key benefit of a digital integration hub architecture is accelerating innovation by enabling the rapid development and launching of new digital applications and new digital services. Uh, the third one you can see is also an important one is 
being able to, to develop a flexible business model and new ecosystem. The big data give a lot of insight on trends and uh, customer preference. Business can use, can use these trends to offer new products and, and services and to uh, disrupt the market while exploring new revenue opportunities. Uh, I think the last but not the least is so that ability, real-time analytics and insight here. Um, again, big data is currently used by organization for segmentation or customer retention, or product and service upselling, cross-selling, recommendation system. Think of uh, Netflix, movies recommendation, or Amazon, similar. So all of that kind of chance I can drive improvement in your sales and lead to additional revenue and give your organization a comp competitive edge. Well, if you go to the next slide, Justin. Sorry about that. A little bit trigger happy there. Um, so as we talk about the benefits of big data, it's also important to recognize how a structured approach enhances your competitive advantage by also making your teams work faster, smarter, better. Big data allows C-levels, department managers, frontline teams to, of course, get real-time data to make good decisions about the business. This is a typical use case for big data. But what is often missed is that if you take it from the point of view of a digital leading organization, the type that has invested in developers, data architects, data scientists, a big data program really makes them much more effective, which in turn drives performance of the company. So at a distant point in our history, performance was really based on how good your sales and marketing teams were. But today that has changed a lot. You may be only as good as your data scientists and data engineers. Yeah, here is a very interesting slide about data architecture. And uh, as we know, many organizations have invested, again, in a central data lake and a data team with the expectation to drive their business base on data. However, after a few initial quick wins, uh, they noticed that the central data team often become a bottleneck. And in that situation, no, there is a new, a new uh, team coming here called Domain-Oriented Decentralization for analytical data. It, what might be the response is also what we call data mesh. So what is data mesh? It's a data mesh architecture enable domain team to, to perform cross-domain data analysis on their own and interconnected data, similar to APIs in the microservice architecture. The domain team ingests operational data, might be structure and structure data, batching, streaming data information, and build the analytical data model to perform their own analysis. Uh, it uses analytical data to build data products based on the other domain needs. And that's, here is the novelty, is uh, looking at the data as a product. So this principle means that there are consumer for the operational data beyond the domain. The domain team is responsible for satisfying the needs of other domain by providing high quality data. Basically, domain data should be treated as any other to big API. So that's a decentralized way uh, that actually bring a lot of value in the, the new in the new world, which is also underpinned by what we call the federate governance that you can see at the bottom of the slide here, which is about principle to achieve interoperability of all the data products through standardization, data quality, data governance, rules, and the main goal is to create a data ecosystem with adherence to all those organizational rules and industry legislation on through data quality. And there's a trend also um, that's hot at the moment, which is brought on by our new Jamaica data privacy laws. Um, so when you think about your big data strategy, and we take a view of the future um, uh, structure of your data architecture, which Mark gave a great view of how those pieces come together. Um, it's important to also think about privacy and what the law requires um, uh, when you think about your big data strategy. And um, we've had some experience so far here um, in EY in the local markets 
on helping companies to think about their data privacy program and how that integrates well into your cybersecurity, but also your data governance and data and analytics program. Um, and we see more and more of this um, being important in the future where data security, data governance, uh, your data and analytics programs, as well as data privacy are all starting to come together um, uh, to build a very robust data analytics program um, that not only secures the data, but also meets the requirements of the law. So here in that slide, we see a lot of use case uh, driven by the big data to improve margin and fight competition, uh, developing across a, a typical customer lifecycle management, management from attracting the customer, upselling the customer, sell and grow, supporting the customer, and obviously retaining the customer and even sometimes winning back the, the customer. So the idea is to develop a sustainable revenue and increase customer satisfaction. That's one of the critical use cases that we see quite often within several organizations in the region is how we're going to be able to bring the, the best service to the customer, to delight the customer and to even anticipate their needs. And that's one of the critical things where data where the machine learning could play a critical role. Go to the next slide. All right, great. So we've sort of taken you through so far, you know, why big data is important, what are some of the benefits, how it benefits the team as well. Um, we've looked at also a general view um, of the architecture um, and also a bit on the use cases and some of the commercial benefits that companies are deriving from big data. But we wanted to illustrate a, a little bit um, better how companies are harnessing big data and put this into sort of real life examples here. Um, so let's take, for example, the situation of a bank who, through a complex sequence of events, as you can see here, data proper you know, data pre preparation, algorithms, neural networks, campaign logic, they're able to rapidly move data coming in through various systems, tracking customer interactions, um, turning insights into actual logic that then automatically generates a campaign to attract, upsell, and incentivize customers, in this case, to credit cards. So this is the typical use case of a financial company and a typical use case of a company that is very far along its big data maturity curve. Here, they would be using predictive modeling tools to drive end-to-end -end automation of cross-selling and retention campaigns, and in turn, drive real commercial benefits to the business. They would have put in place um, to drive all of this, a really solid program to enable this type of outcome. And the pieces behind it would look very similar to the slide you just saw that takes source data, has a way to load and store it, um, model it, uh, serve it, and then would have people trained up on how to consume it. And all of this would be wrapped in tight controls, again, governing the security use and access to data. Um, so let's take a look at another example, Mark. Yeah, so that's a telecom e example here. So and, and basically, as you know, especially in the telecom industry, there are a lot of promotion running, there are a lot of a specific uh, offering and uh, it's always difficult for the telecom operator to understand if they are building value or they're destroying value so here is a, is a case where basically we are able to thanks to the to the big data infrastructure and, and to the machine learning to assess the effectiveness of the promotion uh, and what is actually the real roi on all those uh, spends uh, for instance what's the impact of providing a two months free tv subscription on a new post subscriber or what is the impact of pro promotional activities on prepaid recharge and bundle acti uh, activation when you say uh, pushes one, get one free, that all of that need to be measured. And very often what we see in marketing is that we don't measure enough. Actually, what is the payback? What has been the return on, on investment for all those um, promotion and marketing spend? And sometimes we don't target the right segment and actually we destroy value for, for, for the business. So as a result of that, it's critical to measure and to track all those uh, promotions. It's, it's very difficult, of course, because you need to apply uh, some statistical uh, logic 
and and people sometimes they don't have even the time the time to, to think of it. That's another important uh, telecom use case. I think we still have another one as well here, which is the next slide. Here is the question: wh Where and how best to cover my uh, my position in the market, or where do I need to set my new point of sales? It might be for a retailer, it might be for a bank to say, okay, where if I want to reduce the number of branches, where should I be? What should be the logic? Where I need to, build, to implement a, a new a, a new point of sales? I need to be able to measure that. And here, in that case, looking at population density, customer demographic, customer transaction when you have those data available, food full of people. And that's all help you to make the right decision and not just believe your intuition. Okay? That's also a very strong case where we got a lot of uh, good uh, outcome. So, Great. And, and you know, to, to, sorry, to say, to summarize, you know, the, the three cases that are they're very different in the sense of in the first one, it's fully automated end to end process, very little human interaction, um, lots of um, logic and predictive modeling going on in the background, um, uh, automatic serving of campaigns um, that can drive and deliver real value upside for the company. In other cases, um, big data is used to generate insights and it could be insights to determine you know where do you next do your next promotion um what's your return on investment on your spend and in case of like the retail example if you're planning um your retail footprint where to go next um you want to combine several layers of data that otherwise in discrete forms it's very difficult to make any sense of it um, big data can do all of that for you. Um, and it requires um, a significant amount of setting up and investment in, in teams who understand how to do that in systems that can combine that data. And so we wanted to then move to um, speaking a bit on how you can build a big data strategy and start realizing some of these benefits. Yeah, on, on that one, again, everything starts also with a strategy and a vision and much more something that the c level is working out. But there are also five key pillars that you can see here that is critical. The first one being data governance. So delivering trust information, data quality, co data completeness through a governance best practice, governance policy within the organization. And so, developing role role like data owner data steward being able then to have people who are going to be responsible for that data as a product as i said earlier that's number one and that's also where everybody needs to start with second one is about architecture and technology so of course i mean technical architecture with the business priorities maybe just got a presentation about the cloud hybrid cloud on premise what type of data I'm having? What type of use cases I want to serve? Do I need real-time data infrastructure? Do I need Kafka system? And so on. The third one is about the operating model of your organization. So it's about industrialization of the information delivery, providing service-based information to the organization, service, service BI, more simple way. All your target operating model is going to take into account the change in your data strategy. Earlier, we we're talking about the data mesh. Data mesh is to decentralize the data, making sure that each company domain gonna get the full ownership of this data. And that's the type of model that you need to understand. You need to benchmark in the industry how best is going to fit into your overall ecosystem and how best is going to fit with, with your overall uh, goals. So the first one is about people. It's about people's skill sets, it's building the right team building the right process, having the, the necessary skills uh, to maximize the value uh, obtained from, from, from those data. So you no, know, there is always some challenge to find the right data engineer, we have the right uh, Azure expert. I right? just did what we just said earlier in the last presentation. All of that is critical, and that's something that is also 
all of all the companies' responsibilities. So I'm all to make sure that we guide them with the right certification, the right technology, so that they can be able to unleash all the people's potential. Then another one that is critical, last but not the least, is identifying those use cases. Okay, what type of data enrichment you need? What type of data set do you need? How are you going to be able to aggregate that together? What are the data that you have at your disposal? What is the data that are already available on which you can already build from use cases? That's something that we're going to discuss in the next slide. But basically, we recommend key use cases to generate early win. Okay, the, the, the step is quite simple. Is first understanding also what is your current value chain? Your current value chain. Do you have already analytic initiative running so that you need you assess those? You understand those that are working, not working. And then basically you also look at what is the best intervention. Okay, what are the key use cases that the industry is uh, relying on? Then very often we meet up with the executive. We try to crystallize those ambitions. We review the use cases. We analyze the the business case. Prioritize those use cases. We try to shortlist that to a top five, a top ten, and on that basis we're gonna start looking into the best data strategy to serve those identified use cases. Okay, so what is important just to keep on mind is everything starts from the use cases. Okay, and not the other way around. We don't start with strategy and then start to figure out what we're gonna do with the strategy in which we have just invested. Now on the next slide, we're talking about maturity journey. Okay, so basically you can see there are four stages. Just if you want just to summarize the reactive and informative stages, it's much more about structured data dealing with it identified the cause of, of the problem the problem took place in the past okay. using various techniques basic dashboarding data analysis basically Excel. Uh, a few a few experts in in that analytics being able to extract some insights uh, but only toward a specific problem okay that's actually the first stage a lot of companies are still stuck in that in that stage no the next stage is more, much more about the, the predictive stage which is about starting using the analytics to make prediction of the future using the historical data information real-time data using various data techniques machine learning data mining to generate more insight on the entire purpose of the organization. So, when we want to have a prescribed solution to a particular problem, then we use that type of analytics. It works both predictive analytics to get the, mo the most accurate results. But apart from that, it also, might also use what we call AI. AI or machine learning to get even better results into automated processes. The final stage is the transformative one. It is where the data analytics is fully infused across the entire organization, infused in the process, socially managed in terms of the decision making process. At this stage, we see strong AI data use cases and also hyper automation generating financial benefits within the organization maybe starting with about or if you uh, financial uh, much more accurate financial forecasting for the organization is fully driven by the data by the data engine great so um this gives you a good uh, insight into even thinking about where you are on your data journey, but also where you can go in the future. It's it's a long journey. Um, we're at the end of our presentation here, but we wanted to also give you a view of what it takes to start on that journey and how 
those key pillars come together, as Mark discussed, um, uh, to sort of bring you closer to uh, predictive or transform transformative stage. Um, of course, we like to start with a strategic vision, and that's what we always recommend, where you take a look at uh, data strategy and governance, and you align you align the data strategy and the, you align that vision with everyone in the organization. But one of the most important things uh, to start with, as well as what we call this practical delivery. So understanding from your sector perspective, what are your use cases? What can we start with immediately? Uh, build that out, learn from that, evaluate that, because then that will build up confidence in your big data program. And then you can start talking about all these other important things, um, data architecture, where you want to go in the future, data governance, skills onboarding, operating model, um, how to make use of all your data. But we really suggest starting small, finding some use cases, and then scaling that out, which could take years to do. You know, so this is a journey, um, and you know, we hope you had uh, a really good session today. Uh, with us, you learned a lot from us, and um, we we are really happy to be here with you to present our view on uh, meeting the big data challenge. Um, and we're going to open the floor now for Q and A. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Mark. I don't see any questions here. I do see a few comments and some maybe we can take because we are actually over time. We, we ran over time over the Q&A section. Um, let me see. Laverne says the big data analytics advantage is used with the AI engine in TikTok and Instagram. Interesting observation. Let me see if we have any others. I know people were were highly anticipating your presentations. So I think people were just taking notes, taking notes and listening <laughs> very carefully, very assiduously. Um, Robert said, good presentation and noted that your graphic was helpful. And Sonika mentioned, she said, this is what I was talking about yesterday. We have to use the data we have to design solutions that will delight customers to get that sometimes elusive competitive advantage great point on your success is not dependent on the skills of your data engineers. Very, 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 very good points. Thank you again, Justin. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Thank so wait, you. I think we do have one question. Wait, one question just came in at the last minute. So let me okay. that one. And this question comes from Tyler. He asks, do you think the Caribbean will be able to leverage the quickly growing big data infrastructure in Azure? This would mean there would be no need for any existing data infrastructure. How would this be able to be leveraged into stage four transformative Azure ML? Mark? Yeah, so basically, if you look from a technology perspective, we can see that a lot of service provider with regard to the cloud. And the cloud actually come up with a very rich ecosystem of from a data governance, from a machine learning perspective, from a data engineering perspective. And that is available to everybody. So that's already a great news. Now the challenge is much more about how we're gonna be able to shift our operating model, okay, or, or business model. And that's something that of course is taking a bit of time. It is something also that where well, we don't have the choice because ultimately there is always somebody that might come up with a new business from scratch while you, you need to adapt your business, okay? And coming from a new business from scratch, this is where you disrupt actually your business. This is what this is the economy. So basically, what is going to be important is to start to rethink actually your business in the context of the digital transformation, saying, okay, where do we want to bring actually that, uh, that competitive edge? Okay, it is we want to improve our, the way we serve our clients, we want to increase actually our efficiencies, and putting that together, making sure you 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 have those cases, the top five, top ten rookies, and starting from there, make that pivot, okay, for the business that already exists. As I said, because you, those, this is where the challenge is. For the new one, everybody take that already into account. Okay, when you create just from an app, we talk about TikTok, go to Facebook, you know, there is also that uh, uh, Uber, Uber doesn't own any taxi, you know, that's a trade, and actually they're one of the bigger business. So, all, so we need the, the old business, the legacy business to adapt rapidly. 
and there's no time for, for that. What is important is what you mentioned is making sure you get the skill sets with, with the people, making sure you start rethinking the operating model, and secondly, making sure that we get some from budgets in order to start addressing that run as early as possible. That should be the way we need to deal with that. But in the in the, the Caribbean, you have all you are all set to, to embark on that journey. Let's take another one. So the questions are coming in now. Usually they just need one person to break the ice and then everybody else right. has questions. So Chris says, great presentation. How do we get SMB in Jamaica to log on? Want to try that one, Mark? Or should I? I yeah, I think, I think for the SMBs, I think it's important for them to start thinking digital. And I, and I know that's a challenge for a lot of SMBs because um, they're small and they they don't necessarily, you know, they're busy um, grappling with the current operations and just trying to make, make ends meet. Um, but I think it's important that you do carve out time to start thinking about your own digital transformation programs. How are you going to move from the physical world to the digital? Start creating those digital interactions. Um, and then from there, it becomes a lot easier to move um, all that data that you're collecting into insights, into generating actual commercial benefits. Um, so I think SMBs uh, need to first think about that strategy, spend some time doing that. They often don't spend enough time there. Um, and then, you know, once they start looking at their digital transformation programs and how they can convert their customer experiences more to the digital world. I'm sure from there, it will open up lots of opportunities around that data and how that data can be used. I would say also today, there's a lot of um, um, self-help tools. There's a lot of ways that um, uh, academic programs, guys can go online and learn more about this. Um, and there's a lot of um, already off the shelf type automation um software and platforms available that smbs can take and start piecing together uh, a strong data program um of course they can come to ey and we're happy to help them as well <laughs> to think through that process <laughs> of course maybe just to add one point on that what is important is just riffing your business in terms of acquiring or just having those infrastructure as a service uh software as a service instead of having still a whole computer you know <laughs> on the desk and uh, and some uh, and, and some uh, whole type of uh application so when you have a software service you're gonna have the updates it's gonna be much more agile you're gonna have all the new features and you're gonna be on that journey it might be quite more uh, quite cheaper also for you so i think just to rethink of all of those uh service that you can get rapidly just while doing Google, quick Google research. You say, okay, if I need a new uh, accounting software, what what should I do? You know, and that's the kind of thing. That's the type of mindset you start. You can start having because you can actually save quite a big a bit of money on that. I see one final question coming in. It comes from Nicholas Kales. How can we improve data governance? Okay, so that, yeah. I'm going to tell you that one. Um, yeah. So that data governance is interesting. We always people believe that's an IT process, but actually it's a business process change, basically. So it's, it's, it's the business who need to define what is a good quality, a good data quality. Okay, and to say, I'll give you a simple example. You know, we probably very often we see that when you ask, you know, the, if you look in your database in your CRM and you look at the address, people's address, you're going to see that people are going to put an address there. They're going to put the street first. They're going to put the number after and so on and so on. And just to say, to define, actually, you need to put the number first, then the street after. You know, that's a kind of very trivial example to say that's business need to define that. OK, you need to define how good look like in terms of data quality. So when people are going to input the, those data into the system, at least we're going to be able to use it, you know, to, to mail people, to engage people. It might be the same looking at the email address and so on and so on. So basically, that's a business process. 
where to support of the te technical team. Starting with defining the policy, defining also some role, as I said, in the data governance, you need to have the data owner, you need to have a data steward, you need to have uh, several roles you're going to look into and to ma making sure that they audit the data, they maintain the quality of those data. And of course, when change happens, to make sure that all those changes are also yeah. valid via a committee, a data committee. Okay, so there's a lot of process to put in place. There's also a few tools that you need also to have to be able to have a quick example. You need to have a, a data catalog. You need to be able to define what is an address in your system, what is a customer in your system, and all of those tools need to also be developed. So again, you can start small on that with the policy, just some common sense or so, but that's fundamental if you want to be able to leverage that's something, of course, we could talk a lot about that, and we have little time. <laughs> Happy to have a session to talk about data governance because that's a big bit of it. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Mark, for that great presentation.